Welcome everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Leo Hammond. I'm Chair of the Urban Design Group and Associate Director for Urban Design at Lambert Smith Hampton. Um, here at the conference, we're drawn from many different professions and backgrounds. But we meet as colleagues and as friends who share a common vision. To improve the lives of people who live and work in cities, towns and villages. Our conference this year celebrates a quarter of a century anniversary since the publication of Making People Friendly Towns. And the front cover of your programme, have you all got a programme? Yeah. yeah. Um, is, uh, features a pen and ink drawing of Birmingham by Francis Tibbalt, the author. So a few, I'm just going to draw out a few themes about the Urban Design Group and the conference um, before we get on to our wonderful speakers over here. So our conference is at a time when climate change is no longer being dismissed even by Americans, two-thirds of whom think action is now needed. Probably couldn't have said that a few years ago. So sustainability is no longer something that can be just waved away by politicians or anyone, as Greta Thunberg has so wonderfully demonstrated over the last six months. And we're going to hear later today about UN sustainability development goals and what it means for urban design. From Emma Spearing, is Emma here? Emma, are you here? Doesn't look like she is. She was meant to be cycling all the way here from Dublin. Maybe she's still cycling. <laughs> anyway, she's going to be speaking later when she's got off her bike and had a shower and done all of those sorts of things. Um, so our conference is also at a time when health and well-being are right to the fore. And we're going to hear later today about the NHS putting health into place report. We're also at a time when there's uncertainty and fear over the B word, we all know what that is, and the economy... And we're going to hear later today that making people-friendly places also makes financial sense. Not just design sense, but financial sense. So, in the lead-up to the conference, over 2019, we at the Urban Design Group have run a series of events. Probably a lot of you have been at various of these events. And it follows a series of initiatives and events that we've run, but we've also run with others, including our friends at London Living Streets, at Mela, at JTP and at HTA, amongst others, over the past year. I'm going to briefly summarise now some of the main issues that have come through, which are going to actually lead into quite a lot of the themes that we're going to be talking about in the conference today. And I might add that there's a lot of good practice going on where we have wonderful urban design. I mean, just look at our recent urban design awards and the housing, des and the housing design awards. But I suggest that we need to do more and that there are still challenges out there. So here are the four key issues um, as we see it at the Urban Design Group. So, issue one, we need to be building in the right locations where people can walk, cycle, use public transport for most journeys they need to take. But the reality is the greenfield development is often in locations where there's no easy alternative to the car. It's in the middle of nowhere, no wonder everybody's driving everywhere. Um, and one third of carbon emissions come from transport. The greenfield development model we have at the moment is concreting ourselves into high energy, high carbon lifestyles. It's not, in the words of the National Planning Policy Framework, achieving sustainable development. Paul Reynolds and Jazz Balla will be talking more about the need uh, for effective strategic urban design and spatial planning later this morning. It's a point that was raised in the conference last year by Roger Evans and mentioned in my columns in the Urban Design Journal. So we have four themes. Here's our second one. Secondly, I and we think we should have everyone involved in the built environment thoroughly trained in urban design. We have some people quite trained, some people who think they know what they're doing, but not everybody does, let's be honest. So perhaps there should be a greater component of urban design for architects who do, after all, study for six years, as well as for planners, landscape architects and highways engineers, as we brought up yesterday at Urban Design Fest. And what about the general public? They should be trained in urban design as well, or be taking an interest, and perhaps they should start in school. Some of you might have been at the government conference in Birmingham earlier this year where George Clark stood up and spoke very eloquently, as he does, about Moby, his educational charity, where he goes into schools and gets kids doing all sorts of design things, including urban design. And one of the most interesting things he said was that some of the best ideas don't necessarily come from urban design professionals, or university students, I'm afraid to say, or secondary school students, but from primary school students, he thought. And he goes in and he meets a lot of people. So we need to harness that urban design energy early. So, third of four points, picking out our themes. 
Uh, we should be designing streets around people rather than vehicles. People of all types, ages and abilities. And it's not just us saying it here at the Urban Design Group, it's what Manual for Streets says. And it's what the Planning Practice Guidance says. It's what the Equality Act demands. But the reality is that in many locations we're still designing streets to suit vehicles rather than people. Our survey found up to 80% of highway authorities are still using old street design guidance and adoption policies. So what we need is a Design Bulletin 32 Amnesty. So I'm inviting anybody here and over the next year to hand in your copies of Design Bulletin 32 or any outdated guidance to Mr Robert Huxford down here for burning. So uh, give them in at the end, send them in, we don't mind, let's just get rid of this guidance. So the fourth point I would like to make, and finally in summary, we need to be building towns and neighbourhoods. Uh, places where people live, play, learn, work, create and trade, where people can come together to form true communities. Not just housing estates. It's not what the government says, but it's about house building. We should be talking about town building. And these homes should be joyous places to live and enjoy with generous gardens, space, light, etc. Not some sort of jokey noddy box next to a motorway. So, bringing this together, we should all be able to work as a team towards common goals. Sustainable development, health, well-being and happiness. There should be a golden thread that runs through from these high-level goals right down to what actually happens on the ground. My partner in crime, in crime sitting in the front here, Katja, will be proposing a framework for towns and cities to join up with policies with these standards. She'll be talking more about that later this morning. So it's easy to dwell on the problems. But now it's time for action. Uh, and by the end of the day, I hope that we will all emerge energised, inspired and determined to bring about changes in the days and the years ahead.